Hey, what's going on, Who That Nation? It is yours truly, TJ Jones. I am the host of the State of the Saints podcast. Thank you so much for checking out the State of the Saints podcast, where we talk New Orleans Saints. I want to say I really do appreciate everyone's time. Uh, I apologize that um, I'm a little bit late. I'm still having issues with the soundboard, as you all can see. I'm actually talking to you through the webcam microphone today. So if I sound a little muffled, if I sound like you know, it has an echo in there, I ask that you will pop. You know, I apologize. Uh, I ask that you bear with me. Uh, you know, it's just one of those days. But uh, thank you all so much. Really do appreciate the time. Uh, we're going to be talking uh, for a few minutes about Latavius Murray and Latavius Murray signing with the Denver Broncos. Uh, after they signed him because he was on the practice squad. And, you know, there's so many members of the Who That Nation uh, have something to say about this. It talks about the ineptitude of the New Orleans Saints allowing a guy like Latavius Murray uh, to actually be on the practice squad in the first place, not being on the on the active roster, getting him signed off. You know, a lot of people are saying, you know, uh, Sean Payton uh, wouldn't allow this to happen. Man, I want people to understand this fully, okay? Um, Latavius Murray going to the Denver Broncos was Latavius Murray's choice. I I want people to understand that. I understand that he meant a lot to the team. I understand that you feel like the Saints should have put him on an active roster where the Denver Broncos wouldn't be able to, uh, you know, pilfer him from, from the roster. But Latavius Murray, the way that he ran last week, uh, I think the guy deserves an even bigger role, uh, and the Denver Broncos are looking for that. Uh, it's going to be interesting because, you know, Latavius Murray, fresh from London, um, <laughs> uh, and has to play most likely on Thursday. You know, I'm pretty sure he's going to get some snaps on Thursday, you know, so his body not even acclimated. He's going to have to play on the Thursday night game. But all in all, I'm extremely excited for Latavius Murray. Um, I've always mentioned that Latavius Murray has always been the bridesmaid and never the bride. He has always been a guy who has really done some amazing things, but nobody really pays that much attention to him because I guess because of the way that he runs, he's not the most explosive runner. He's more like a one cut back. He's a guy that can, you know, do some things, you know, if you give him an opportunity in the lane. So uh, I guess his running style isn't that exciting. Latavius Murray, to me, he reminds me a lot of Arian Foster, like his running style. Some of you probably remember Arian Foster. Uh, He was a guy that had some good moments in the National Football League. But if you ever notice his running style, he was always a guy that starts to get stronger as the game progressed. And that's what Latavius Murray is. And I I get it. You know, a lot of Saints fans are discouraged by this, especially since it seemed like he was the best running back on the field last week. He had 11 carries for 57 yards and a touchdown and averaged about five and a half yards a clip. And then you look at uh, Mark Ingram, who only had 10 carries for 30 yards. And it just looks like Latavius Murray was just leaps and bounds better than he was on this day. But I'm not a person that just look looks at this as, you know, a loss. And I look at it from a game because Latavius Murray was sitting on his couch. He was sitting on his couch. He probably thought his football career was over. And he get an opportunity and he and he takes advantage of the opportunity and it opens up an even bigger opportunity for him to be able to have a bigger role and have a bigger bankroll. So I, I'm not mad at that. You know, I was mad at the time because, to be honest, I never really seen anything like that. And until it was actually explained to me, um, you know, I, I have to say that I completely understand that. I, I'm not I'm not mad at Latavius Murray for that. I'm not even mad at the Saints for that because. How would the Saints know? How would the Saints know that Latavius Murray was going to be the best running back out there? And how would they think that any team would just come in on a Monday and just snatch him up like that? I mean, I, I, I'm I pretty sure the Saints didn't expect that. And I, I haven't really seen anything like that. So I, I'm, I'm going to just say that I'm just going to uh, not put this solely on the Saints. The Saints, they have guys that are in that locker room that are capable of making plays. Look, I get it, right? Because – we're on a losing streak right now. We're on a three-game losing streak. Things are looking bad. Things are looking bleak. And um, it doesn't seem like much hope is in sight. But I don't want to just completely, like, just poo-poo on everybody just because they had a bad game or just because they haven't gotten into the flow of the season just yet. 
Um, I, I still believe in this running back group. Uh, I'm not that upset because we know that Alvin Kamara is the starting running back for the Saints. And when he comes back, we know that history has shown us that he's extremely productive. And I think if with Mark Ingram, you know, getting just a few of the shares of the, of the snaps and maybe adding another running back uh, would be uh, beneficial to the New Orleans Saints. Uh, I don't understand why Tony Jones Jr. continues to be on the active roster. Uh, he's been a healthy scratch for what, the last two weeks. So I don't know if it's just the fact that the Saints don't want to use him or they rather want to see if, you know, maybe he can just be on the roster in case somebody goes down on special teams. I do not know. But I do know this. Um, I, I like the way Latavius Murray ran. I, I think that the Saints may need to go out there and try to find somebody that kind of mirrors that style. Uh, I mentioned on social media, a guy like Bo Scarborough would be a, a big pickup for the New Orleans Saints. He ran really well. Uh, in the USFL for uh, the Birmingham Stallions. Uh, he did a really good job, had a good yards per average, had good pad level. He's a guy that can wear down any defense. So I think that he would be a good complimentary back. I also feel like uh, right here uh, with the running game, I think that it showed us a lot. It showed us that maybe the Saints need to put more emphasis on the running attack. Maybe they need to put more plays in place where they get a little bit more exotic with the running attacks. We've seen this uh, happen in years past. We've seen it work for teams uh, like the Tennessee Titans. We've seen it work for teams uh, like the San Francisco 49ers. And I just think that if the Saints just continue to pound the rock and they continue to use these exotic run plays, it'll set up the play action. If you looked at how well Latavius Murray was actually running in that game, and you see the, the way that the Saints were able to utilize that in the play action, that's when you start to see the ball start to you know go down the field. That's when you start to see guys getting open. That's when you start to see Andy Dalton be able to find guys that were in open lanes. So that right there, I feel like, would be the recipe for success, running the ball. And I get it, right? You have to have a commitment to the run. You can't just you know sit back and just say, okay, we ran it twice, we didn't get anything, so it's time to throw the ball all over the yard. No. OK, you have to be patient with the running attack. Sometimes it might give you a yard. Sometimes it might give you two yards, but constantly smashing, uh, you know, into the defensive line around quarter three, around quarter four. Uh, that's when you're going to see like defenses start to get tired and you're going to be able to utilize the running game more effectively. And not to mention, you'll be able to set up that play action for some more explosive plays and wide open uh, guys down the field. So. To me, I feel like just the direction the Saints need to go in. I think that Latavius Murray, if he did anything on top of, uh, you know, being extremely productive, it shows you what an effective running game can do and how it can help your offense. So he definitely was a person that was, a you know, was very helpful uh, in the success of the New Orleans Saints offensively and them being able to improve offensively uh, in that game versus the Minnesota Vikings. So I get it. You're upset. I was upset for a while because, to be honest, I didn't know about the rules. I just thought that the Saints just allowed this to happen. But now that I realize it was his choice and he looked at it as a better opportunity, uh, I can be happy for Latavius Murray. And I appreciate him for his efforts and what he did uh, for the Saints uh, this past weekend because he definitely was the spark that they needed uh, to try to uh, do everything they can to try to win. Now, they didn't get the win, but I think that Latavius Murray sparked uh, kind of help them, uh, you know, try to push forward uh, towards the end of the game. But I'm going to go ahead and read some of your comments and uh, we'll go from there. Uh, let's see. Joe Dog, thank you very much for the $3. Says Dennis the Menace. Uh, and remind me of du uh, Deuce McAllister. Yeah, he really does. You know, Deuce McAllister kind of leaned forward. Wasn't the fastest running back in the world, but. He always leaned forward, and for the most part, he always got positive yards. Uh, man, listen, if you offered me a full-time position as opposed to a part-time position, I'm taking it too, and many of y'all would too. It's his career. Yeah, look, I, I think with a lot of Saints fans, you know, after, you know, you learn the verbiage, I think you're looking at this selfishly. Um, all in all, you got to be happy for the man. This This guy was sitting at home a couple of weeks ago, and he thought his football career was over and him getting the opportunity and taking advantage of the opportunity. Um, 
it, it, it created an even big opportunity for him. So I'm not mad at him. I, I think that if we're mad, we're mad because he's not there and he was extremely productive. And I get all that. But when Alvin Kamara gets back and then you have Mark Ingram, you know, I mean, the Saints aren't going to just, you know what I'm saying, like be able to split those, those uh, you know what I'm saying, those snaps with him. Because if Mark is getting like 10, you know, and what you're going to do, split them in half, five and five. So you're still going to have Alvin Kamara taking the majority of the snaps. So if he feels like it's a better opportunity for him to be able to get maybe 12 to 15 snaps per game versus, you know, maybe five or maybe not even any at all, why not? Why not? You know, so I think that that was a great opportunity for him. And I'm not mad at him. He definitely will be missed. Who that baby? Exactly, Doug. I'd be really, really mad at the Saints, but I'm not. Uh, welcome to the Dennis Allen era. I don't think th this didn't have anything to do with Dennis Allen. He had nothing to do with it, you know. Like, I want people to understand if Latavius, like, if Bro the Broncos wanted to sign him off the practice squad, he could have easily said no. He could have said no. I want y'all to understand this, okay? So it was his choice, you know. I, I want look. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not a fan of keeping players handcuffed like you're our property you know what I'm saying? you belong to the saints i look i look i don't roll like that look this guy had an opportunity and he had a choice and he took the choice that he felt like would be beneficial for him going forward so we can't get mad at dennis allen we can't get mad at mickey loomis we can't get mad at anybody in the saints organization i get it right now you know we are finding things to be mad about and you know what I'm saying? It's easy to find things to be mad about. But th in this particular case, I can't blame them for this. It was a choice that was made by Latavius Murray, not the Saints. Yeah, I'm not mad, too. That came from nowhere. Uh, the Saints are really starting to frustrate me. Murray was a good back. Running back is a serious need. Ingram is a love back, but he is a cough-up artist in serious games. Uh, well, look. For the last two weeks, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Mark Ingram didn't fumble. Did he fumble last week? Did he fumble last week versus the uh, versus the Carolina Panthers? I don't think so. I don't think he fumbled. Um, those last two games, you know, what I'm saying the first two games of the season, he fumbled. But he's been carrying the ball twenty. He's carried the ball what twenty times uh, over the last couple of weeks. I ain't seen him fumble. You know what I'm saying? So. I can't just call him a fumble artist. A fumble artist is somebody that just constantly keeps on coughing up the ball week after week, you know, over and over again. But for the last two weeks, the guy hasn't fumbled. So we got to be careful about creating these narratives. And we also got to be careful uh, at the fact that guys could just be having bad games. Like, I get it, man. Like, I'm not, look, I'm not one of those individuals, and I encourage you not to be one of those individuals as well who just critique these guys with a fine tooth comb and basically determine who these guys actually are as players from a week to week basis. Sometimes it's just not the guy we, sometimes, you know, they're going to have a bad matchup. Sometimes, you know, they may not just be feeling it. And, but that's not an indication of who these players actually are. And I don't feel like that's fair. Now we can talk about the King 10 carries for 30 yards, but at the same time, Mark Ingram has been carrying the ball relatively well over the last couple of weeks. Now, we all know that all that gets negated because of the fumbling of the football, but he still has a good yards per carry average. And just because Latavius Murray had a better game than he did in London doesn't mean that, oh, we about, you know what I'm saying, there's something wrong with Mark Ingram. Mm -hmm. Nothing is wrong with Mark Ingram, in my opinion. I mean, I feel like he's getting good, a good yard average. I feel like he's really running the ball really well. I mean, those fumbles just kind of, like I said, erase all of the good work and all the all the positive things that you do. But I just think that we need to be very careful, man. Like anytime a guy has a bad week, let's just say if he plays four games and he has three good games and one bad game, it, it seems like to me like some fans just ready to write a guy off or say something wrong with him or say they lost a step or say they fell off. You know, like I, I, I can't get into that. Like, let, let's let some weeks go by before we really start having a conversation about who these players actually are, especially if these players have put up enough goodwill in our eyes for us to give them an opportunity. I just think that, uh, you know, there, there's a hole in a the boat, there's water leaking in, 
And a lot of people are panicking right now, trying to get that water out the boat. But um, we have to be careful, man, about some of our take. Cause I just think that we're just frustrated that the team isn't what we thought they would be at four weeks into the season. And uh, I think that some of the players are, are getting the, the backlash because of that. Uh, it's the Saints fault. They didn't sign him to the team. Instead, they signed him to the practice squad. So it's their fault. Mark Ingram is washed, bro. Uh, I don't think Mark Ingram is washed. I disagree with that. Prove to, like, prove to me that Mark Ingram is washed. I mean, if you want to say that, you know, he's fumbling a football, you know what I'm saying, for like the first two weeks, fine. But the dude is like – has a really good yards per carry average. Like y'all looking at this 10 ca carry 30 yard game. And now it's like, Oh man, you know, he ain't got it no more. Like, come on, man. Like the dude was toting the ball really well. Like even in the game versus Tampa, he fumbled at the goal line. He still, he had 10 carries for, for 60 yards. So he's averaging about six yards a clip. So I, I can't get down with that, man. And then on top of that, like the dude came back into the game. I don't know if he had like a, a a leg, a knee injury, or he had like some, you know, some uh, neck injury. I'm not too sure, man. So, man, you gotta take that stuff into account. I'm not, I'm not sitting up here just saying that the dude just, just sitting up here like he just straight trash. Like, if you mad at him for fumbling, be mad at him for fumbling. But don't, like, don't make it seem like the dude ain't just out there doing absolutely nothing. Now, I, I have to disagree with you on that. Let's see. Listen, we have to set. Uh, we have a good set of players. And a Vikings game seems we were close to uh, turning a corner. I'm sure it will work out. Yeah, I think, you know, as, as time progresses, uh, hopefully they'll be able to turn a corner. I'm, I'm not very optimistic with this coaching staff. I'm, I'm going to be real with you. It has nothing to do with the players. I think the, I think they got the right players. I, I just question this coaching staff. Them boys are a little bit too scared for me. They're a little bit too conservative for me. It just seemed like to me they so focused on trying to do the right thing instead of just being like aggressive when uh, they're aggressive times, they're, they're way too passive, you know, a fourth and one, you're ready to go out there to kick a 60 some yard field goal there. I mean, Sean Payton would never, right. I don't care if the saints are down or not. Look, if he go for it on fourth and one, he trusting his team to get one yard. And if you can't get one yard, then you don't deserve to win. But all of this conservative play calling, all of this passive aggressive behavior, I mean, it, it's really rubbing me the wrong way. Um, the Saints are looking real soft out there when it comes to the coaching. It, it's more like you need to do, you know, it, it's, it's less of you need to do this and more of, well, what do you want to do today? Like bump all that, man. Like you have to be able to set the tone as a coach. You got to be able to make the necessary adjustments. And I'm, I'm just saying, man, I'm, I'm not getting swag. I'm, I'm not getting drip. I'm not getting confidence. Uh, I'm not getting none of these things from this coaching staff, man. It just seemed like a bunch of guys – that is just trying to do the right thing, right? It's like they playing operation out there, you know what I'm saying? They're not trying to hit the sides so the buzzer going to go off. Look, man, it is what it is. Sometimes the buzzer might go off, man, but get that funny bone out. What I mean by that is, you know what I'm saying, be aggressive. Be aggressive in your approach. I mean, they just, to me, they're a little soft, man, like for real. Like, they're a little soft when it comes to, like, the play calling. Too conservative, man. There's no killer instinct on this team. Like, who has the killer instinct besides maybe Chris Olave? Chris Olave probably the only one out there to me that consistently him and P. Warner probably have like the killer instinct. I'm talking about even even like some of the 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 even like some of the guys that are leaders on this team. Like, I feel like they got a little bit of a passive approach, and I get it. Right, no need to panic. You got to be the leader, but I ain't seeing many dogs out there, man. I'm seeing a bunch of puppies playing out there on Sunday. And I, I feel like the attitude reflects the leadership. Ain't that what they tell you? So if, if your team playing a little bit soft, maybe you need to look at your coaching staff and see where they are right now. Because as of right now, I have absolutely no faith in this coaching staff. I feel like this is one of those things, like if the Saints end up being successful, they're going to be successful in spite of the coaching staff. And that's kind of hard to do. You know, it, it's kind of hard to do, but they, they way too soft. They way too soft for me, man. Like, just this, some of the play calling. Like, the play calling is just, like, buttoned up to the top. You know what I'm saying? Like, well-dressed. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know, man. Sometimes, like, man, you got to you gotta throw a monkey wrench in that plane. You know, sometimes you got to go for it on fourth down. Sometimes, man, you got to get your team fired up. It, 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 they just 
It just seemed like to me, like they play every single game, like they played against Tampa last year when they won nine to nothing. They were playing not to lose the game. They weren't playing to win. They was playing not to lose. And one thing we can talk about the New Orleans Saints, there were times where the Saints would be up by two or three touchdowns. They still out there throwing that rock because they want to win by three or four touchdowns. You know what I'm saying? They want to win by five touchdowns. That, that's, the, that's the type of mentality you need to have because that's the type of stuff that you want to build up. And it also just it, it puts in the back of your team's mind like, man, maybe we are unstoppable. Maybe we are some dogs. Maybe we do have what it takes to go all the way. I don't think there's a player right now that if they're really honestly looking at themselves, really believe that like they did at the beginning of the season. They they too conservative for me, man. Too conservative, uh, too soft. And, and I don't like it. It's a bunch of there's a bunch of politically correct stuff going on. I agree about the coaching staff, TJ. Uh can't beat the references. Uh, I think we should make an offer to Brian Leftwich next year. To be honest with you, I don't I don't think that's the answer either. Because look at Tampa offense. Tampa offense is trash too. If we want to be honest with you, and what and what guy just completely like just goes away from the passing game? I mean, from the running game. What what they had like? I don't even think they ran the ball at all in the fourth quarter. Like, and that's the second time like under his. Under his uh, leadership, they done that. They did it with the Saints when the Saints blew them out 38-3. to Now, I know some people are probably saying, well, if you're down by those many points, you got to throw the ball all over the place. No, not necessarily because you can still run the football. Maybe, you know what I'm saying? You'll still be able to run the football to keep the defense honest. But I don't know if he's the answer either because somebody tell me the difference between a Tampa Bay Buccaneers offense and a Saints offense. I mean, somebody tell me the difference. They both struggling. They both look like trash. They both unorganized. They both have uh, trouble, uh, troubles on the offensive line. Uh, guys can't, you know, you know, guys are trying to get open, but there, there's no rhyme, no reason there. So, can Byron Leftwich fix the Saints' offense? I don't think so. I know. I mean, do I feel like he needs to get an opportunity? Yeah, nothing, nothing wrong with that, but I don't, I don't know if he's the answer. That's which uh, you fear often becomes reality, uh, not to mention playing with bad ref calls. Look, man, I already mentioned that on the last show. Um, I encourage everybody to look at that documentary on Tim Donahue on Netflix. I don't know if you've seen it or not, but go check it out. But I, I stand here today and I'm not trying to raise any time for controversy, but it is what it is. Uh, I feel like Vegas and the NFL are in bed with one another. Look, I don't feel like the games are being like predetermined or anything like that. But I do feel like when it comes to point spreads, I feel like these these referees start to get a little bit flag happy. Because if you look at the point spread, I think the Vikings were supposed to beat the Saints by two and a half and they end up beating them by three. Right. But just think about this. If the Saints with the momentum that they had, there was no illegal hands to the face. There was no pass interference call. If, there, if none of those things transpired, the Saints probably would have got the ball back. And we don't know what would have happened, but they did have momentum. Um, they could have, uh, you know, they could have went out there, scored again, got in field goal range, got up a little bit more. And what happens to the point spread? Well, it goes away. It's a little bit further back. So I do feel like sometimes when these games are close or uh, the game start to get a little bit out of hand, they'll start throwing flags in order for them to appease the point spread in some of these games. I, I don't care what anybody say. I, I feel like in the future, we going somebody's gonna come out, somebody gonna blow the whistle on these these referees and the NFL being in bed with some of these uh some of the you know some of these gambling spots. You know, I, I I'm like just go look at it, man. Like for the most part, if you start looking at these point spreads and in these games, they almost kind of like the same thing Vegas predicted. Now, I get it, right? People, they got their analytics department. They got all these people talking. Yeah, you know, this person runs the ball 30 some odd percent of the time, and then they run to the left this many times. Look, I get all that, right? But ain't nobody just sitting up there just looking at them analytics like that to a point where they can just determine games after game. If that's the case, I play the lottery every single week. Like, if, if I can come up with some type of, some type of uh, hypothesis or some type of theory that can help me 
You know what I'm saying? Like come up with the right numbers all the time or something close to it. I'm playing a lottery all the time. So you ain't about to tell me like something is wrong here. I don't think, like I said, I don't think that they like throwing games. You know, I don't feel like it's that, that but I do feel like they they try to control the point spread. I, I feel like they embed one another. And I would be highly surprised in the future that they don't come out about saying that. Because if you if you notice, like it, it people will say, well, the flags didn't win or lose the game. What about the flag in the first quarter? What about the flag in the second quarter? I'm telling y'all right now, there's there's a method to the madness. Think about this. There's a method to the madness. Now, if a referee blows a call in the first quarter and it's just flagrant in the fourth quarter, and let's just say, for example, the flag in the first quarter was flagrant for the team that won. You know what that fan going to say? Well, what happened in the first quarter when that when that, they missed that call on this? So it's going to justify that, right? But in the fourth quarter, when, when the game is close, throwing those flags, that affects the game. It affects the game more than it did in the first quarter. But people aren't going to, people aren't going to believe that. People aren't going to accept that. They're going to just feel like, well, it happened to, you know what I'm saying, it happened to us, now it's happening to you. But look at the times in which it's happening. It's, it's game deciding time. It's, it's in the last couple of minutes of the game. And it, you can even go, like the Saints won in, in spite of this, but you can even go back to the Atlanta Falcon game. Think about this, right? So they called that late flag, you know, like Brandon, you know what I'm saying? Brandon Edwards hits Marshawn Lattimore, right? And Marshawn Lattimore retaliates and he falls to the ground, throws a flag, right? But that sets up a 60-yard field goal. That sets up a 60-yard field goal for a young way cool that got blocked. But we know this dude pretty automatic. You don't think the NFL knows that? You don't think those referees know that? You don't see how good he was they don't, You don't think they saw how good he was kicking? And you don't think they know possibly the chances that he might drill it. So I'm just saying, man, it, it just seemed like to me they 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 not as flag happy in the second and in the first quarter than they are in like the fourth quarter. And those are the game, those are the times. Like I don't care what anybody says. Those are the times where the flags matter most. In the first quarter, somebody throwing pass interference. Yeah, you might score, but look how many opportunities that you have in order for you to get back into the game, right? But when you start, like, game tied at 17, game tied at 20, and you throwing flags on the last drive on third downs when the when the defense is getting off the field, I'm telling you, something is going to come out. I, I, might, I might be dead and gone, going on the bright glory, but somebody going to come out and blow the whistle. Dwight Smith already exposed in his NFL. Anyone up for getting a Saints game day party bus? Uh, <laughs> drop me a line. Act for Steven. 504 466 4477. Let's do this. Hey, uh, Steven, uh, hey, you, you owe me, you owe me, <laughs> you owe me some money for that sponsor, man. <laughs> for that, for that drop right there. I'm just kidding, man. Y'all made, I'm gonna put it on the screen, man. For anybody that's interested in the party bus, I'll leave it up there for a minute. Shouts out to Steven, man. Uh, yes, look at the teams that a uh, higher percent of people put money on funds, a way to lose Kansas City versus Indy. Steven A don't watch football, bro. He looks at Twitter dudes and entertainer, not an analyst. I think he's a basketball analyst, a way better basketball analyst than, a, than football. But that happens, though, man. Like, I get, like, honestly, I can do basketball, but I, I really, I'm like, you probably not going to get as much passion uh, out of me doing basketball than you would football because I love football. So I'm not, I'm not necessarily mad because he's knowledgeable on one thing and he's not as knowledgeable on the other. Uh, but I do feel like, yeah, I do agree. He's an entertainer and he's a radio person. He's had, well, he's had a career being a radio personality. So you, you can't be, you can't get more animated than that. Trust me. I know I'm with you, TJ. We'll uh, go get Joe Brady, see what he can do. Yeah, you know, I wouldn't be mad at that. The only thing that I feel like I would have issues with, maybe his organizational skills. Uh, some of those young coaches need to get a little bit organized. That's why I feel like uh, the coach of the Denver Broncos 
he's dealing with right now. You know, I, I feel like uh, he, he's dealing with those growing pains of a young coach. But besides that, you know, I think he has the offensive innovation, and I think it's a matter of time before he becomes a coach. Alvin and I uh, saw the same with Jameis moving the ball against Tampa till Ingram fumbled, and how about the drive kills by the penalties? Yeah, the penalties and also um, blaming Marshawn Lattimore for getting blasted, you know what I'm saying, by Mike Evans who came off the sidelines, and they end up getting him kicked out of the game, which I feel like that was a strategy. They seen how he was locking up Mike Evans. They knew that in order for them to win, they had to have like some type of advantage. I'm talking about as soon as Marshawn Lattimore left the game, they went up top, pork chop to Perryman when they had P.J. Williams on. And they knew it. Like, we all seen, like, the video of Peyton and Eli on Monday Night Football. Special guest was Tom Brady. And this dude was breaking down the New Orleans Saints secondary from the top of the top to the low of the low. Every guy, every tendency or whatever, he knew him by name. So you don't think he knew that – uh, P.J. Williams struggles on the outside, he went right to him. Like in the words of Mark Ingram, up top, poke chop, touchdown. So, yeah, that that right there, like, honestly cost the Saints the game. And uh, Mike Evans, him losing, leave, leaving the game didn't matter anyway because he wasn't never in it because he was getting locked down. So he didn't have no production anyway. Uh, you're right, T.J., that's why I believe uh, they won't make uh, every call reviewable because they want to be able to cheat. You know, I heard somebody was talking about this. Um, they were saying that, well, they don't want to have an eye in the sky because it might slow down the game. Look, it's about getting it right, because you're, you're basically deciding the fate of a team by every single call. That's what people are missing. I don't care about slowing down the game. It's about getting it right. It's about transparency. I have to agree with you, cool sports. Is rather they just don't want to get it right. They they want this level of controversy out there. I mean, maybe they feel like that's just good television because we know for a while it was like that with baseball. Like they didn't want any reviews there, right? Because they feel like, oh, it's it's it's, it's messing up the game. It's it's affecting the way they play the game. It, it's not going back to the days of Joe DiMaggio and, and Babe Ruth. Like who cares? Like it's about getting it right. Like you're basically deciding the fate of this team. And to be honest with you, what if it's a situation like how it was last year with the New Orleans Saints, where they're probably one game out and they needed to win? And let's just say, you know, if they won that Giants game like they, you know, like last year, they would have been in the playoffs. What if they would have ended up beating the Minnesota Vikings in, in week four? That would have been a deciding factor of them making the playoffs. See, people are looking at this. Well, it's early in the season, it's early in the season. And we're saying that to validate uh, some of the woes of the Saints. But it is early in the season, but these games at the same time still count. And these games can count down the line. So by not making the right calls, it's affecting. It is affecting the teams down the line. So I don't care how long it takes. And honestly, if you got an eye in the sky with, with you know, with CCTV, you know what I'm saying, some instant replay, you know what I'm saying, like how long would it take? Like y'all up here talking, y'all seeing it down on the field. He could be looking up there, buzzing down. Hey, man, pick that flag up. That wasn't pass interference. I seen both both players had contact. Oh, that wasn't illegal hands to the face. I just seen this footage right here. He hit him on the shoulder and not, you know, not in the face. Problem solved. So like, maybe they don't want it to happen that way. You know, maybe they don't want it to happen that way. I don't know. Uh, Molly, thank you very much for five dollars. Says on the serious side, we are only one and a half uh, games out of first place. It's not time to quit. Who that? I definitely agree with you on that, but it has to start this Sunday. Like, there's no room for error. The Saints have to win this game. They have got to win this game. It's not going to be easy because Geno Smith is leading the, the league in, in completion percentage. If you haven't, if you haven't heard, this dude is like has like a 77% completion percentage right now. It's just outrageous, like crazy. But shouts out to Geno Smith, you know, resurrecting his career, you know, make, changing the narrative about his, himself. These guys just put up 40-plus points. So if the Saints just think that it's just going to be easy to just go up in here and beat this team, they sadly mistaken. This team is motivated. This team had drive. 
This team has heard people write them off because Russell Wilson isn't there and all these other things going on. This team is going to be motivated to beat the Saints, and the Saints need to take advantage of, of being at home, uh, them having what a, I, I assume like a two hour, uh, you know what I'm saying, like a two hour, because basically I guess the game starts at 12 Central and technically on the West Coast it's 10 o'clock. So you have to take advantage of the time change that the Seahawks are going through. You have to go out there and execute and you have to win. You got to win this game. If, if, if the Saints don't win this game, we're talking about a completely uh, different story, folks. Uh, did Alvin Kamara fumble during garbage time? And did Ingram fumble versus the Bucks in garbage time? Uh, no, no, they didn't. It was early in the game. It, it was early in the game uh, when that happened. Um, I, I can see where you're going with this, I think. Um, but at the same time, um, them fumbling, right? It happened early in the game, but um, it happened early in the game, but there was have been more play. Like, for example, I'm trying to I'm trying to use an example. Kirk Cousins, right? Kirk Cousins throws an interception to Tyron Matthew early in the game. That could have, you know what I'm saying? That could have like affected the game. Um, it, it depends, man. Like you still had more opportunities to make plays, if that makes sense. That that you know what I'm saying? Like it, it gave up a, a many opportunities to make plays, but late in games, you don't have like any margin forever. Like the last five minutes of a game, there's a chance that you may never even possess the football again. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I feel like that would be uh more detrimental than something that happens early. In the season, uh, Roger, thank you very much for the fifty dollars. Says, think about it, TJ DraftKings, FanDuel, uh, MGM, uh, Caesar Entertainment, sports betting is becoming a multi-billion-dollar business uh, with sports betting algorithms and cryptos, all part of the new digital economic called the Fourth Industrial Revolution. Man, that sounds like the the plot uh, for a movie that's about to come out. But Roger, thank you very much for the fifty dollars. Look, we have no problem with DraftKings over here getting money because uh, DraftKings sponsors the State of the Saints podcast. But uh, if you if we want to be honest, I, I do think that they got some some validity behind the referees and the point spread. I can't prove it. Okay, they that's what they say. They said it's not about what you know; it's about what you can prove. I can't prove it, but it sure look like it. Nathan. Thank you very much for ten dollars. Says Chicago attorney Brian. Uh, is that too high? Uh, wrote two books to fix is in the fixes in at Larceny Games on subject. He goes through FBI documents and Senate hearings. Uh, these leagues are labeled uh, as entertainment, not sports. That's a good point. NFL is labeled as sports entertainment, Nathan. That's a good. That's a really good point right there. And you know, even <laughs> a lot of people feel like the NBA threw Tim Donahue under the bus. In some in some ways, because the FBI was about to investigate the NBA, but instead they used Tim Donahue as the sacrificial lamb, so to speak. So, <laughs> so a lot, you know, I, I think that may have been you know chickens coming home to roost for them if they didn't if, if they didn't uh, you know give up Tim Donahue and what he was doing. Brandon, you know, uh, Jameis can uh, let me see can do uh, no right for some Saints fans. I've seen some of the other forums saying that Dalton won just by stepping on the field. Well, look, <laughs> that that goes to show you how, how low the bar is right now when it comes to the morale of the quarterback position. OK, just the fact that he's like <laughs> there's this uh, meme of Vince McMahon sitting in the chair. Right. And, you know, what I'm saying? his eyes are still like you're rolling back and he just falls back in the chair. And I can just think about in my mind, like how. Some of them Saints fans looking when the Andy Dalton complete a five yard pass. Like that, this is how this is how low the bar is right now as a Saints fan. I, I've seen Saints fans going at it about wishing they can get Jared Goff and Carson Wentz. Like I like Carson Wentz. Don't get me wrong, Jared Goff. I mean, he played pretty well, but boy, has the bar been set low? I mean, since Drew Brees left, like it, it it's to a point where we, you know. We looking for I mean, Drew Brees, 28 of 32, 315 and three touchdowns. Now we looking and hoping that a guy can complete a five, you know what I'm saying, a, a five-yard pass or a screen pass. Like it's 
it's bad business right now, man. It's, it's bad business. But regardless, at the end of the day, um, we're all Saints fans, and whoever the quarterback is, we should want to win. Like I'm, I'm out. Like I'm out of this Jameis Winston Andy Dalton debate. Like to me, it, it benefits absolutely nothing right now. It benefits nothing. Whoever the quarterback is, that's who I'm rooting for. I'm not looking for a guy to fail. I'm not looking at a guy play the quarterback position with a fine tooth comb and try to uh, exploit his limitations at the quarterback position. Oh, you seen how he ran to the right when he should have ran to the left? You seen Adam Troutman ride open? Man, he could have threw that pass on the side right there, and he could have toe drag swag. Like, man, bump all that. I'm more concerned about this team winning football games. I don't care who the quarterback is. Uh, the snot ball, thank you very much for $5. Man, thank y'all so much, man. I appreciate all this. TJ, your podcast uh, getting big, bro. You started to have trolls on YouTube. State of the Saints, uh, 2019, respect. Uh, hey, man, look, I, I said this, like I, like I said, man, I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Thank y'all, man. I appreciate that. Everybody that has ever watched this show, everybody that has ever, um, you know, watch this show for five seconds, five minutes. I appreciate that. And for everybody that's making podcasts, rather you talking about whatever, God bless you. God bless you, man. I hope all of your dreams come true. TJ, every penalty in the CFL is reviewable. Hmm, some people need to follow that. Uh, I know for a fact the game are manipulated. I don't know if the NFL picks who wins or not. <laughs> Yeah, man, I, I'm not sure about that. I, I, I don't know what's going on. Of course, I'm a troll. If you don't agree, uh, get out of here. <laughs> uh, let me see. Make me or B.I. Or B. Joey Howell hit dogs will holler. <laughs> um, at the end of the day, Drew is gone, and we were spoiled for many years. Yeah, great quarterback play. Sometimes quarterback play can be so good, it can be so hot. <laughs> That we we don't even realize how much how great it is to have. Like it, it, it's so great. Greatness is so regular to us. We feel like it's normal, and now we're realizing that it's not. Uh, TJ Vegas is a little too good with the point spread and over unders. Man, you ain't lying, Eugene. When making my uh, score prediction on social media, based on both folks, really be thinking I'm smart. Man, I'm telling you, like something is going on. Like I said, I don't think like. They go into the game, man. We gonna make the, like, we gonna make the Minnesota Vikings win today. I don't think it's like that, but I do think like if the point spread is like two and a half or something like that, I think that's when you are gonna start seeing the flags because it's rather they want to keep that. They want it to be a stronger chance that the score stays the way it is, or it gives another team opportunity to possess the ball to be able to uh, get some points. I'm telling you, like, there's something. Something going on here. We have no return game and special teams play uh, that can really help our offense and, and field position. You ain't lying, Slim South. I mentioned this. Uh, Deontay Hart is a shell of himself. I don't know what's going on. I don't know if he's preserving himself. But if he is, man, look, bye-bye. Like, I like you, but bye-bye, okay? We don't need nobody out there that's phoning it in uh, because, because they ain't getting no contract pouting, whining, and boo-hooing, uh, get somebody else opportunity. Kurt Merritt ran the ball pretty well in preseason during kick returns. You got Rashid Shahid back there from Weber State, right? You know what I'm saying? You got him returning kicks. He's supposed to be the, he was the best in, you know, college football when he was coming out. So, I mean, get somebody else opportunity, man. Look, the NFL is a land of opportunities. There's guys that sitting on the couch right now that's muscled up, work hard every day, going out there to these fields, wanting to get back into the NFL or want to play in the NFL and you out there squandering your opportunities because you mad because maybe you ain't getting the money you feel like you deserve. Well, guess what? You're not going to get that money anyway if you're playing like slow and nobody wants to pay a quitter. I know I wouldn't. And I know he's better than that. I'm not mad at saying this because I know he's better than that. If he was if he wasn't good or had the had the had all the tools to be probably one of the best kick returners in the NFL like, I wouldn't be saying this, but to me, the dude is quitting on the team. And if you're doing that, then you need to go sit on the side 
maybe holler at your agent, be like, man, maybe you can get me up out of here. Maybe, you know what I'm saying, say I want to want to get a trade, but over there on the sidelines, uh, not really, you know, in tune with the game, looking like you disinterested. I don't know what's going on. Get somebody else opportunity. And I guarantee you that'll wake them up then. And then you'll have a decision to make. Ain't nobody going to pay you if they don't see you on the field, right? Yeah, they might pay you a little bit, but you ain't about to get top dollar because they're going to be wondering why you ain't on the field. So you have an opportunity. Man, Deontay Harris, uh, I wish it was Harris, but Hardy, uh, he has an opportunity to really uh, be a game changer. I can't remember. I can't tell you how many games this dude has basically changed the game by flipping the field for the New Orleans Saints. Now it just seemed like he just tiptoeing through the tulips or something like that or I don't know, running through hot coals or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Not trying to burn the bottom of his feet. I don't know what's going on. But Deontay Hardy uh, is a shell of, of himself. You know, we need Deontay Harris back. So I'm happy, you know what I'm saying? Like, shouts out to his, uh, his, his stepdad, you know what I'm saying, who was instrumental in his life, the reason why he changed his name. But, look, if this is what we're going to get, you might want to go back to Harris, my friend. Uh, great work, uh, my Carver Ram brother. Hey, man, shouts out to all them Carver Rams out there, man. Orange and green all day. Y'all stand up. Shouts out to, to all my fellow Carver Rams out there and all New Orleans high schools, man. Shouts out to y'all as well. Uh, we just a hurt team right now. I don't think uh, well, we strength and condition uh, <laughs> because our training camps are vanilla at best, not counting the, uh, the fights. Well, Trey, look, this, this is what it is right here. I'm not blaming nobody being hurt. Like, I'm tired of these excuses. Like, I look at trash teams get better. I'm looking at the Giants getting better. I'm looking at the Jaguars getting better. I'm looking at the Jets getting better. And none of these teams have better talent than the New Orleans Saints. And I'm talking about rather starters or just depth as a whole. I feel like some of the Saints' backups are better than some of the starters that they have on these teams. But yet these guys are buying into the system, and they believe in what these coaches are saying. Nobody is about to tell me that the New York football Giants a better equipped team than the New Orleans Saints on paper and, and based on like the talent that they have on the team. Yet they only lost one game. I Look, it comes a time when we got to stop making excuses and we got to call it for what it is. As of right now, today, October 4th, 2022, in the year of our Lord, the New Orleans Saints are a terrible football team and they have nobody but themselves to blame for that. The ineptitude of the coaching, uh, I don't, you know, not being able to be aggressive. These players seem like, you know, they I don't know if they're not believing in what uh, Dennis Allen is doing. I don't know if they they just feel like, you know, because he's not much of a as much of a taskmaster as a uh, as Sean Payton was. Maybe they feel like the inmates can run the asylum. I don't know what's going on. But sometimes you got to look in the mirror and say it's you. OK, it, it's like we want to blame mama. We want to blame daddy. We want to blame husband, wife, boyfriend, girlfriend. But sometimes we got to look at ourselves and realize that we are the problem. And, oh, we ain't got Michael Thomas, or we ain't got this, or this dude hurt, or that dude hurt. Bump all that. These teams are rising, be, they're rising beyond or above their situation, and the New Orleans Saints aren't doing it. So it's about it's about that time for us to, can, like, to stop with these excuses. Man, they ain't got this, they ain't got that. We need time. Doug Peterson didn't know any one of those guys on the Jacksonville Jaguars team. No, no. They know him from a can of paint, didn't coach him or nothing. But yet, they bought into what he's doing. So what's the difference between Doug Peterson and Dennis Allen? I'll let you decide that. But I will not take that as an excuse. Not today, not anymore. These, these teams are not better than New Orleans Saints on paper. They, they do not possess the same level of talent the New Orleans Saints have. And for us to be like, well, they're trying to figure it out. And these other teams are doing the same thing, but they're, they're winning games. I, I can't accept that. It's time out for us to just it's time out for us to stop making excuses for this team and, and and start holding this team accountable for not doing the things they need to do to win. Like every single week, turnovers, every single week. You know, somebody fumbling the football, false starts, undisciplined special teams. Like, come on, man. Like you got to look at this team and be like, they are the reason why they suck. You know, none, none of these like none of these players. I feel like you would want to give up. Like all these players, I feel like they have contribute to the success of this team in a major way. So it's not like, man, this dude like good enough. This dude not good enough. You might have some spots, right? You might have some spots. Like, 
okay, I'll trade this guy for this. But for the most part, they got the right tools to be successful. The question is why? And you got to look at the coach. I'm not making no more excuses for this team. We are uh, we are a quarter into the season, and we still up here talking about mission and meshing and, and, and rounding the corner and, and cleaning up, you know, captain cleanup, a.k.a. Uh, head coach Dennis Allen. We got to clean this up. We got to clean that up. You know, my son Paxton sings a song, clean up, clean up. You know what I'm saying? That, that's basically what I, I, I hear every time this dude say something about clean up. I'm sick and tired of hearing about clean up. Captain Cleanup need to get this thing together because right now he's looking like a guy that's not good, not a good fit for this job. And people are like, man, it's four, four, uh, four games in. I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. Just like Jameis Winston, he has no room for error. I'm going to say that again. Just like Jameis Winston, he has no room for error because the thoughts and the theories are already out about Dennis Allen not being a good coach. Just like there were theories and thoughts about Jameis Winston not being a good quarterback. So the, the same the, the same people, the same individuals that are out here that are talking about Jameis, man, he ain't not, good enough, he ain't not a good enough quarterback. Look what he did in Tampa, this, that, and the third. He is who he is. It's the same thing for Dennis Allen. So you can't afford to go out there and, and look sloppy. Your team can't afford to go out there and be looking bad, you know, because, look, just like everybody talking about 30 for 30, what? 8 and 28. 8 and 28, 30 for 30, right? So people looking at your record. So he can't afford to do that. Some of these other coaches out here, like uh, like Hackett, you know what I'm saying, out there in Denver, yeah, you can afford to mess up. You're a new coach. You'll learn as you go. But this guy's had experience as a head coach, and it wasn't a good going of it. So everything that you do is supposed to be a level of improvement from where you came from. But right now, you were you had a losing franchise in for in Oakland, and it, you're having a losing franchise in New Orleans. So, if it walks like a duck, sounds like a duck, flies like a duck, guess what, man? It ain't no it ain't no silverback gorilla. It's a duck. Does Murray of uh, being lost after the game uh, he had Sunday make you wonder whether our coaching staff main priority is winning? No, not at all, because. He got picked off the practice squad. He got picked off the practice squad. And also, cool, cool, he, he had a choice. Okay, so he could have stayed, but he didn't. He felt like it would be a bigger role in Denver. So that's the reason why I give them, you know, I give them a pass for this. All right, because, hey, you know what I'm saying? He looked at it as a better opportunity. I, I wish you well in your future endeavors. All right, so I, I can't get mad at him for that. Uh, I never said you was a troll because I disagree with you. Uh, it's almost like the players uh, looking at the coaches like a joke. I don't know if they're looking at them like a joke or not. I just think that they don't have that same level. They don't have that same response as when Sean Payton was there. I, I really feel like that. Like you, you got to be careful, man. You got to be careful. Like it's good to be a player, a player's coach, but you also got to let those, those, uh, those players know, man, you ain't, you ain't about that nonsense. And I, I don't feel like they 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 believe that. I was just about to say that about Doug Peterson. Yeah, man, look, there's a difference between guys that can coach and guys that can't. And right now, Dennis Allen and, and, and guys like Todd Bowles are looking like good coordinators. And it happens. It happens. This, this is not an indictment of who he is as a coach. It's an indictment of who he is as a head coach. But it's not an indictment of him as a coach, as a defensive coordinator. Look, Dennis Allen can coach my defense any day, right? The, the side of the football where he manages looks really good, right? Which in, in all cases, it mostly, most of the time it does, right? If you have an offensive coach, more than likely your offense is going to be really good, right? And your defense probably will be middle of the pack if you don't find the right defensive coordinator. So – him being a defensive coach, your defense should improve because that's your calling card. That's what got you the job. That's what got the eyes on you. Hello, TJ. I just got home uh, from uni. Okay, man. Well, thank you for being here. Appreciate that. Uh, it's a duck. Exactly. On a pro level, do you think it's the coach's fault for the fumbling uh, though? No, it's not the coach's fault. It's not the coach's fault. Look, I, I don't blame the coaches for the fumbling, but I do teach, I do blame them for not putting a point of emphasis on this and not putting the fear of God 
in these guys to let them understand what fumbling is. And look, they're grown men. They know what fumbling is, man. They know what it's all about. Like you fumble the football, you 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 dropping the hopes and dreams of the team. We heard this so many times, man. That we get it. But look, man, you need to put some emphasis on this. I mean, when guys are doing these type of things, man, it's a problem. And you gotta address it. And maybe these guys don't want to address, it. they might roll their eyes, but hey. You're fumbling the football, and we don't want to have this down the stretch. This stuff like this is going to cost us games in crucial situations if we're fighting for our playoff life. So, man, you're just going to have to grin and bear it and, and go through some of these fumbling drills and some of these wet ball drills and some of these other drills that we need to do for ball security. Because if you're dropping a ball on the ground, then you're costing us the game. So who cares what they think? You, you got to have an attitude like, man, I'm going to run this thing like it needs to be ran. Like, looking at it and wondering what the player's going to think about that, man. Like, look, these guys have to fall in line for the most part. Now, I'm not saying, like, just completely, like, just walk past them, act like they don't exist and don't feel like their opinions and views matter. But for the most part, you got to trust your gut as a coach because guys want to follow somebody that they feel like is a leader. You know, like, you know, they, they want people to have that, you know what I'm saying, that, that, that eyes in the back of the head type mentality. Like, man, look, if I'm going to war, I want this guy right here to be my general. Look, I, I don't think guys want to have a general that's, you know what I'm saying, saying, hey, guys, get on out there. You know what I'm saying? They want a general that can be like, man, let's attack, and I'm getting up out the foxhole first. Those are the type of coaches that guys want to follow, not these guys out here, oh, you don't feel like practicing today? Oh, I don't know. He has a back injury. We're going to let him have a light practice today. Man, you need to push these guys to reach their full potential. And have these guys respecting you. They ain't got to fear you, but respect you. And feel like when they letting you down, it means something. Man, I got to I gotta tell this story. I went out. I was uh, in management. Um, I was working at CVS Pharmacy. I was working overnight. And uh, may he rest in peace. And my manager, his name was Gary Snow. And um, I'll never forget this, man. When I, when I got hired for the job, he interviewed me. And he asked me, like, you know, what I wanted, like, as far as, like, per hour. And I told him when he gave me the job, he ended up giving me, like, three, four dollars more than what I asked for. And also, you know, like, he always had time, you know what I'm saying, to teach me certain things. And I remember, like, when I first got promoted and I was struggling as a manager because I was young, man. I was young. I was doing crazy stuff, like, going out late, you know, and, and coming home late at, like, two in the morning when I got to open the door at six and you know, I wasn't really doing my job to the, the, you know, to my best of my ability. Wasn't doing it. And I remember, like, I ended up opening the store. It was like six in the morning. And he was sitting out there waiting for me in a parking lot. And this was something that was major because this man worked at the same store for 10 years and he never left the store. He left the store one time and that was to come meet me in that parking lot. And he sat in the office and talked to me about two hours and he basically said, you know, you know, I, I put that good word in you for you to get promoted and and you're, you're squandering this opportunity. You're squandering it. And he was like, I'm going to help you get your store uh, back in shape. He said, and then the rest is up to you. When he talked to me and he told me about me squandering the opportunity, it was like a dad telling his son that, you know, you really messed up. Because I always wanted to like get his approval because of how well he treated me and how much love he, he showed me. And after that, man, I changed my complete style, man. I, you know, didn't go out and stuff like that when I knew I had to work the next day and work early. I was a little bit more responsible and I was able to like, you know, get different, you know, different awards and, and different things that came to me in a positive way. So to me, you know, a leader you have to have that type of respect for a leader. If, they, if if your coach and your players don't have that level of respect for you, like, man, if you tell me something, you ain't got to be yelling and screaming because he ain't never yelling and screaming at me. But he, he told me in a way like, man, you know what I'm saying? This is really disappointing right now. And it, and, it, and it made you feel some type of way. If you're not that type of coach, then that ain't the right, you know what I'm saying? Like, you, you ain't the right person. You ain't the right person. But once again, that guy, Gary Snow, taught me a lot of lessons, and I think that I still carry a lot of those today, man. And, um, you know, it meant a lot to me. So may he rest in peace. Uh, he, he died last year, uh, but he was, a, he was a great guy, 
and he taught me a lot. So uh, let's see, the officiating is crazy. No passion at the moment. Uh, who that till I cry, who that till I die. Uh, I'm using Saints as a Bible pick this weekend. Wish Alave got that other foot in. Yeah, I mean, look, he tried, though. He tried. I mean, look, ain't, ain't, there's if one person doesn't doesn't deserve any type of scrutiny as of right now, it's Chris Alave. He playing out of his mind. In ways, he making you forget about Michael Thomas not being out there. I uh, genuinely hope most of the top players the Saints have uh, – get trade, ask for a trade so <laughs> they can be somewhere and do better, you know, uh, with a better coach and offense. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be honest. They can't write this ship. Um, I wouldn't be opposed to watching Cam Jordan go play for another team that he, he can win a Super Bowl with because, man, that man don't deserve it. That man be giving everything he had. For 12 years, this man been out here grinding, never missed a game. For anything serious, you know, last year he missed the game because of COVID. He came back with his hair on fire. You know, guys like that, you know, they deserve to find somewhere to win and be able to be a champion. If you can't get it here, then go get it somewhere else. You know, a team that's trying to do something and ain't trying to get in their own way and shoot themselves in the foot, as they often say. TJ, do you think they can give up on DA after one year? Yep. Yep. <laughs> Absolutely. Like, why, why should you stick with them? This, this isn't a struggling franchise that's trying to rebuild. This isn't a this isn't a franchise that don't have a good infrastructure. This isn't a this isn't a, a franchise that got a front office all in a disarray. This was a team that was one game away and a 49 loss away from making the playoffs with 57 different variations of a starting lineup. Injuries, Hurricane Ida, uh, uh, you know what I'm saying, a smoky superdome that was on fire. All these different things that happened last season, but yet they still found themselves in the very last game in the thick of it. So, yes, you you and not to mention, you got way better talent than you had last year on this team. From an offensive standpoint, a defensive standpoint, you you got better, you know what I'm saying? You got better talent in some areas. Got guys that were young and inexperienced now going into their second year of being, you know, beneficial. So, yes, like to me, like if, if it don't pan out, the Saints don't make the playoffs, uh, they don't get close to 10 wins or they flirt around five and six. Nah, you fire him. You fire him. Like what, what more do you need to see? The only thing that I hate out of all this about firing Dennis Allen, and this is something I feel like Mickey Loomis and, and, and the front office did not think about. And maybe it would have happened anyway. Who knows? But now – if you fire Dennis Allen, you lose a defensive coordinator. You lose him because he's not going to stay with the team. So all that, all those years, 2014, 2015, when they couldn't stop nobody, finally from 2017 on back, you've been having a formidable defense. You're, you're in jeopardy of losing that if you were to fire him. At least you know, like, as long as he's the head coach, at least you know um, that the defense is going to be on point. And if they don't do that, then they probably going to end up relieving P. Carmichael's of his duties if they want to keep him because the defense is so good. Because you're not going to keep Dennis Allen if you fire him. You're not going to be able to keep him as a defensive coordinator. TJ, do you think even uh, with offensive faults, our defense can carry us to the playoffs, wild card appearance? Look. If the offense stays steady, they not turn the ball over, they not having self-inflicted wounds, but they just consistent. They they getting down the field, 10 to 12 play drives. They're allowing the defense to stay on the sidelines, get a little Gatorade in their system, and not being out there three and out, three and out, three and out. Then yes, I do feel that way. As long as the offense can be able to sustain some drives. But you gotta be complimentary. You don't have to be a high powered offense. You don't gotta be putting up 40 points a game. You ain't gotta be throwing 300 yards. But you cannot shoot yourself in the foot offensively and, and cause the defense to be able to have to bail you out over and over and over again. So, yes, there's a possibility that can happen. But the offense has got to be able to hold on to the football and they got to stop making these crucial mistakes because the defense is out there way too long, way too long. If they get a great draft pick, uh, then draft a great quarterback and let Sean come back. Look, I said this on 
I said this on the last show and I said it on plenty of other shows. Sean Payton does not want to coach the Saints no more. Now, <laughs> like, I want people to understand this. The dude wants another opportunity and it's well within his rights. Dude don't want to come back to no Saints. Dude want to go out here and coach some other team and give another franchise an opportunity to be able to build another, you know, uh, you know, Saints type uh, infrastructure somewhere else. I just think that people just think, oh, man, Sean Payton, he's just taking a year off and coming back. Dude, yeah, yeah, for another team. I just think that we just think that Sean Payton, you know, just quit because, you know, oh, you just got tired. He, man, the man didn't want to coach this team no more. He probably wanted, you know, he probably did want to take the rest, but he didn't want to coach his team anymore. I'm not even going to try to play myself to believe, oh, he's just taking a break and he won't come back. I'm, I'm I'm saying this, and I said this on other episodes as well. If Sean Payton comes back to coaching football, and if the Saints are looking really, really bad, you're going to have a lot of Saints fans that are going to turn on Sean Payton because they're going to be like, man, look, we need you, and you're just going to leave us like that when you know we need you and we need help. He ain't going to look like, you know, <laughs> the deity that he is right now if he goes back and the Saints have a losing record. Uh, I can never imagine the Saints winning only four games. Nah, man, that's impossible. I can't imagine it either. I think they have too much talent, but we'll see. TJ, that's why I say uh, get rid of Pete instead. Or oh, Pete who? Andrews Pete? <laughs> I know we ain't talking about Pete Warner. I know we ain't talking about him. We got to be talking about <laughs> Andrews Pete. Uh, I think it's a, uh, it'll be unfair to boot Allen after one season. He was left with a giant salary cap problem that will uh, possibly take years. Man, nah, nah, that's, that's an excuse. That's an excuse because I'm telling you, the same, like, come on, man. Like, we, we cannot move the goalposts now. We can't move the goalposts now because when the Saints came out there and they got the hunted badger, and when the Saints went out there and got Marcus May, and when the Saints came out there and got Jarvis Landry, and we heard Michael Thomas was coming back. And we jumping during the Benson Boogie when they drafted Chris Olave. When we were talking to all of the NFC South opponents, man, we about to run this division. I can't see the Saints losing a game. Them boys about to make the playoffs. They about to get the one seed. Now, all of a sudden, like, oh, man, you know, we got to give it a chance. Nah, bro, we got to stop moving the goalposts. I'm not talking about you in particular, James. But what I'm saying is the energy. That, that we were talking earlier in the season, we ain't talking with that same energy now. Now we're trying to find excuses as to why, you know what I'm saying, like the Saints ain't as good as we say that they were going to be in the offseason. No, 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 no. This dude right here inherited an embarrassment of riches. I can make an argument. This team is structured, and what they tried to do in the offseason probably was better than any other offseason they didn't have probably in the last four to five years. The thing about it is Sean Payton was signed, guys, and make it work. There, there has not been a time, as far as I can remember, where the Saints just had a collection of guys that you just automatically knew from the rip that these guys were capable of making plays from the jump. Usually it's guys like, oh, man, I think this dude might end up being something. Or we'll see. But when you hear names like Jarvis Landry and Tyron Matthew, it's like, oh, snap. You know what I'm saying? Like now, now we now we now we seeing something. Now now we now we doing something here. So no, nah, this dude has no excuse. None. Do have all the pieces in place to have a high powered offense. You got all the pieces to have an elite defense, and it's not coming together. I don't feel like it's unfair. And not to mention, once again. If we so quick to get rid of Jameis Winston after 20, because of 2019, 30 touchdown, 30 picks, and he threw a few interceptions at the beginning of the season, we ready to write him off. Now all of a sudden, like, Dennis Allen needs to stay. It's not fair for him to be able to, you know, get, get fired after one year. Like, nah. And I'm like I said, once again, James, I'm not picking on you. I'm just talking about people i'm seeing people saying these things i'm, I'm seeing the chat saying it like nah not after one year but some of the same energy is not the same for Jameis winston we ready to write him off like nah he ain't it he done he slow but dennis allen becomes the saints head coach with an 8 and 28 head coaching record overall and we just kind of look past that like nah nah give him another year nah man nah i want to win you know I want to win. 
don't care what everybody said, man. Shit, I, 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 look, I don't care, care who the coach is. I just want to win. TJ, what do you uh, think is the best uh, Saints team ever? 2018, the team that did the, the, the NOLA no call. I mean, if you want to look at history, I guess you have to say the 2009 Saints because they won a Super Bowl. But um, as for me, as for, as for moi, you know what I'm saying? I'm going with the 2018 uh, New Orleans Saints. That was a good team right there. Should have went to the Super Bowl. Probably would have won. You know, they would have did better than what the Rams did in that Super Bowl. I can tell you that right now. Um, I'm going to read one more. Now I got to get up out of here, folks. I got to head out. Uh, let's see. A, a Jets fan in the chat. Ain't this a surprise? Yeah, that, that, we didn't really hit rock bottom. <laughs> we didn't really hit rock bottom. <laughs> and we got a Jets fan up in here repping. Sorry about that. I apologize. Let's see. Hey, TJ, is it possible we get Bobby Abel back on soon? Yeah, I can ask him. I'll ask him. I'll ask him. I can get him back on. I'm pretty sure he, had, you know, he has a lot to say. Uh, are you serious? You surely overvalue the Saints roster. Now, I ain't overvaluing anything. I'm not overvaluing anything. We saying this now. Hindsight is 2020. Like you, like the majority of Saints fans who have the same energy right now didn't have that same energy back then. Like. We we're we're living in now. So now we're talking about the team. Like, oh, they ain't, I don't know. But you ain't had that energy when the season started, when it was getting all these guys. Now all of a sudden, like it ain't working. Uh, are you sure about that? Like hindsight is 2020. Hindsight is 2020, right or wrong. Like the energy that we had in the offseason, once again, is not the same energy we have now. Exactly, TJ. Uh right now, uh, go Dalton, go Saints. Exactly. I mean, look, whoever's starting right now from a Falcon fan, y'all got uh, y'all got win mode. I, I said this before and I say this why Falcon fan is here. And I'm probably going to take a lot of same fans off. But if I'm looking at coaching, I'm looking at structure. The, I, I feel like the Falcons probably going to win the division as of right now. Like what the way things stand, the way teams are playing right now, it would not surprise me if the Falcon win this division. And that's how bad this, this division is. Actually, is like when it comes from a coaching standpoint. Like they they got the most stability at the head coaching position, so I really feel that way. I, I really do. And y'all know it, it's tough to say some stuff like that. So we are happy y'all struggling. Uh, I'm pretty sure y'all are. Ain't nobody feeling sorry for no team, no, no rival team struggling. If the Falcons were struggling, if the 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 Bucks were struggling, if Panthers were struggling. I mean, sure. I, of course, that that benefits me. Uh, I agree. Uh, from a felt, uh, Panthers fan, yeah. Uh, we still uh, in it the way of the South. Looking, uh, somebody might win it with nine to ten games. NFC don't look dominant so far. No, not at all. Not at all. Uh, thank you in advance for Will Anderson and Miles Murphy. <laughs> Uh, Patterson, a beast, ain't gonna lie. Yeah, he is. But he's gonna be out for like a month, man. He, he messed his knee up, so speedy recovery for him. I always can appreciate a guy that's toting that mail, man, and doing a good job helping his team win. I totally agree with you about the Falcons winning the division. I mean, I'm just, I'm like, somebody saying no way in hell. Maybe, maybe you ain't see the, you ain't been watching the Falcons play. Like, they, they not as, like, I, I know we laugh, and you know what I'm saying? The Saints came back and, and beat them. That was funny and stuff, but, like when it comes to heart, passion, buying into it, like they got a they got a pretty solid team over there. I'm not like I, I don't like them, but I ain't gonna just be no hater on that. You know, I ain't gonna be no hater. I might sound crazy, but I feel like we're gonna end up winning six games, and it'll be uh, that respect back uh, on our names. But we have to get the running game going. You said you're gonna end up winning uh, six straight. Um, you think we're going to end up winning six straight? I ain't going to lie. I wanted to end up using this today. The next time you get in trouble, call a crackhead. Yeah, man. That ain't, that ain't, I don't think so, man. 
I don't think so. I don't think I don't know if they're gonna go. In. I think they're gonna win some games, but I don't know if they're gonna probably go on those no seven game winning streak. Now, I will pin this. I will pin this, you know, because I want to give you your credit if that happens. Uh, RB Arthur, um, I want to make sure I give you your credit. But uh, I ain't gonna lie, that wasn't towards you. I just wanted to use this uh, today. The next time you get in trouble, call a crackhead. Oh, man, hey, we go. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the new one right there. We just we just plugged that one in. But thank y'all so much for checking out the State of the Saints podcast. I really do appreciate it. Much love to everybody. Thank you for bearing with me. Um, once again, the microphone was having a little issue and talking to you through the webcam mic. But thank you all so much for your love, your support. Uh, shouts out to everybody that watched this channel. I just ask that you hit the like button. Shouts out to everybody that donated to this channel. Thank you for helping this channel grow. I really do appreciate it. Make sure that you check out previous episodes that are available on iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Anchor FM, part of the Pigskin Podcast Network. Uh, Shouts out to my boy Tim, who just rolled up into the chat, uh, you know, from Canada. Shouts out to you, man. Uh, Shouts out to everybody that's here that that chimed in, making this show uh, successful. All right. Got to go ahead and get up out of here. Uh, but always remember this. The next time you get in trouble, call a crackhead. <laughs> Who that?